In this lesson, we will learn how to paint textures inside XSI. To do this, we're going to learn how to use weight maps. Let's start by getting a grid. Once the grid has been selected, we go to Property and Weight Map. When I press the W on the keyboard, we go into Weight Paint Mode. Holding down the left mouse button, we can start painting. The weight map works according to the points or the vertices on your object. The more geometry we have, the better detail we're going to get when we paint. For example, I'm going to select the geometry by going to Properties in the Subdivisions and then Add More Subdivisions. Now when I press W for Weight Paint, I get a little more detail when I paint. Now, we're not really painting a texture, we're painting a weight map. And this is what we're going to use later on when we paint our textures. An object can have multiple weight maps. To create a weight map, select the object, go to Property, and Weight Map. We can rename the individual weight maps for identification, for example, Map 2. Now, when I paint, I have a second weight map to paint on. This works best if you use a pen tablet because it takes into account the level of pressure that you apply. These two windows up here on the left are related to the weight map and its color. I can assign different colors for each weight map. Right now, I'm painting on map 2. Let's apply a reddish color. I'm going to press 8 to open Explorer, and then we go to the Grid, Polygon Mesh, Clusters, Weight Maps. Now we have Weight Map 2 and Weight Map in our cluster. So if I want to switch to the first Weight Map, I just select this one and it instantly toggles to the first Weight Map. Now I can continue painting. Using the wheel mouse, I can adjust the brush radius. Now right mouse button to erase, left mouse button to paint. Map 2, right mouse button to erase. Okay, so now we can see how to apply this with textures. Open a new scene. Let's open the Porsche image, the typical Porsche. We're going to focus on one door. First, we'll hide the Porsche by using the H key. Select H to hide. As you can see, this door just has a few polygons on it. So if we want to paint it, we'll be limited in what we want to paint. So what we're going to do is subdivide the door. Essentially, we're creating a new door. Go to Create, Poly Mesh, and go to Subdivision. I won't delete the first door, I'm just going to hide it. And then I'm going to subdivide it, say, four times. Now as you can see, the door with fewer polygons is still hidden. We'll, remain, we'll rename it, press F2, and rename it to Door high res. Now I'm going to freeze them all. This deletes the operator, unlinks the two doors, and frees the memory. The next step is to start adding weight maps. We're going to select door high res and switch to selection and then clean this up. We're just going to switch to Clusters and Props. Select the object, go to Render. With the object selected, I'm going to add a color, like a base color. 
and then we're going to start adding textures. Now, using 7 on the keyboard, we get the render tree. And we see the object has a default material, which is gray. So we're going to open a texture layer editor. I'll just move this down here. Let's switch to a texture layer editor. This is the object's render tree. The first thing we notice is that it has a default color, which is gray. We're going to start by adding another color. Select Material, then select Fong. Let's just add a little reddish color. Something, yeah, something like that. Yeah, maybe a little bit darker. Now we refresh and we get our base color with ambient and diffuse material, which is a fong material, and we have the red color. Now let's add a texture layer. First we need to add a texture projection. So select Property, Texture Projection, and XY. And now we have a projection, which is a green frame. This frame will help us paint our textures. Now let's add the first layer in Texture. Instead of selecting Get Texture, we're going to do this in Texture under Modify. Now Add, now Add Image. This will give us an added layer. We have the base color and then we have an image layer. Now if I put in a texture, we can see the blending between the color and the textures. I'm going to do a render region using the Q key. I could also do this by going to the Render Region tool in the menu bar. Now we can see the blending being done between the color and the texture. I can remove this layer entirely by clicking on 0% or fade it just a little bit by moving this percentage slider here. This is our anti-alias level. I'm going to be using a low level because it renders faster. Now if I double click on the image, I get a texture property page. I'm going to go from new from file and from the paint tools database, I'm going to add this metal. With a percentage slider, we can return to the red or keep this 100% metal. Here we choose the blending mode we want, like in, out, or plus. It's similar to the one you find in Photoshop. So let's select the one we like, darken, lighten, hard light. I'm going to leave it with hard light. Okay, the next step is to add more textures and layers. So we're going to get an object and do the following. We're going to add a second layer with texture. Add image. New from file. Let's go to pictures and let's go to rust. And we will add a little red rust.